Thank you so much for all your interest. The room is packed here today. Really excited to see all these faces to learn about, excuse me, to learn about our short stature hybrids and our smart corn system. So welcome, please. There's lots of, there's still quite a few spaces in the front for those in the back. Come on forward, take a seat. It's gonna be an exciting 30 minutes. So my name is Denise Bouverette. I'm so excited and happy to be here with you today. I work with Bayer. I'm the North America Corn Launch Lead, and I'm so excited to be here to talk to you about the Smart Corn System, powered by one of our latest innovations, you may have heard of it, our short stature hybrids. This, these hybrids are a game-changing innovation, we think, that could be really transformational for growers and drive potentially the next revolution of corn production in the U.S. Our program today, I'm gonna to give you a brief introduction into the technology, and then I'm gonna to transition to one of my colleagues who will facilitate a Q&A session with several growers who have uh, agreed to join with us today to give their impressions about the technology. So you hear a little bit about the technology from me, and then we'll hear from some of you on what you think about the technology as well. So why do we think short stature hybrids are game-changing innovation? Well, one thing, one reason, is that we really see that shorter plant architecture provides some inherent benefits in the plant uh, for growing corn. One of those benefits is an inherent improved standability. This photo you see on the slide was a research plot that happened to be in the path of the 2020 derecho storm that went through Iowa. Any hands, anybody experienced that storm? I see a few hands over here. This was one of our research plots. Uh, this particular location experienced 30 minutes of sustained winds uh, in excess of 60 miles per hour. Those white rectangles on the slide represent our short stature corn hybrid plots which remain standing after that storm compared to the rest of our traditional pipeline that you'll see is mostly lodged around it. This is just one of the reasons that we at Bayer are so excited about our short stature corn technology. And we're so excited that we're investing heavily in our R&D pipeline with multiple approaches to deliver this to our growers so that we can ensure to provide market access flexibility. The most advanced approach is our breeding native trait. This is in phase four. That's what we're gonna talk about mostly today. But we also have a biotechnology trait in the pipeline in phase three which is a collaboration with BASF, and a gene, genome editing approach in our discovery pipeline. So we're committed to the short stature corn technology and we do believe that this is going to be a game-changing innovation that will open up a lot of possibilities for our growers. Short stature hybrids are super cool. I don't know if anybody here has had a chance to see them in person. Raise your hand if you've seen them in person. Wow, a lot of you, awesome. Do you think they're super cool? Give me a whoop whoop. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so why do I think they're cool? Uh, you know, they, short stature hybrids in and of themselves has some inherent benefits. We've already talked about one of them, their protection. But they also have access benefits and yield potential benefits. We talked about protection due to the increased standability resistance to that lodging and green snap. This is gonna provide growers added protection from yield losses due, due to those increasing severity and frequency of storms and high winds that we're experiencing throughout the US. Who thinks that's gonna help you on your operation? Raise your hand. Excellent. I, I've only been able to uh, go through a harvest once with someone that had to harvest down corn. It was not a pleasant experience. So I think that improved har harvestability, late season standability is gonna be a huge benefit for, for many of you. But the second thing that I'm really excited about is the access piece. So our short stature hybrids grow to about five to seven feet, taller than me, um, but not as tall as the hybrids that you're experiencing today. That five to seven feet height allows growers ultimate flexibility to be able to access that field with your standard ground equipment all season long. So you've got extended windows for certain things like side dress with even toolbar equipment and all season access with your standard ground equipment, which gives you the opportunity to uh, more precisely and, and with better timing, apply those inputs uh, with increased flexibility throughout the season. 
The last thing is yield potential. So we believe that these, these hybrids will yield similarly to your tall corn hybrids based on our, our, our testing that we've done so far within our, our bear uh, breeding system. But there is an opportunity to increase um, and look for incremental yield potential with this particular product concept. And it comes from the first two benefits around protection and access. So we believe growers will be able to uh, have the opportunity to optimize those crop inputs and really make the most out of the inputs that you put in and get the maximum return on your investment for those inputs to drive yields. And that you'll be able to do that with more flexibility and more ease with the short stature hybrids and that all season access. We also believe that growers will have the opportunity to push populations and think about optimizing density populations for their yield goals in a different way with less risk uh, of lodging and green snap as you do that, even in 30 inch rows. These two things taken together, we think can drive incremental yield on your farm. When I think about short stature corn in general, two things come to mind for me. All of these inherent benefits for the hybrids really drive a reduction in risk in your operation and increased opportunities to do things differently, have more flexibility, to manage your crop inputs all year long and drive the yield potential that you're looking for. If you think about the beginning of the season, that first time you plant that hybrid, you know what the yield potential of that hybrid could be, but everything that happens throughout the season is an opportunity to rob that yield. This system allows you a, an additional um, flexibility to be able to preserve and protect that yield throughout the season. Uh, and drive less, it result, resulting in less variability, in, improved profitability potentially at the end of the season. And all of that through the protection, access, yield potential benefits of the short stature hybrids. Whoops. Sorry. There we go. So what do we mean when we talk about the smart corn system? So for us, the smart corn system is really um, the combination of all of the inherent benefits of the short stature hybrids that we've just talk about, talked about, in addition to customized, tailored agronomic recommendations that will help you uh, optimize those inputs to maximize your yield potential on your farm with the hybrids, and digital advice that will uh, maximize the performance of the bare products on your field, such as smart field placement, the right hybrid on the right acre, with the right population response for that hybrid to maximize and achieve your yield goals. All of these things taken together, we believe, will help you unlock the full value of the smart corn system powered by those short stature hybrids. So we have a lot going on in the next couple of years with our short stature hybrids. Uh, this is a super exciting time for us. I think it's the coolest thing on the market today. Well, it's not on the market yet today, but it's the coolest thing that will be on the market in a little while. But we're still in a test and learn environment. So over the next several years, uh, we will be continuing to test and learn and developing and refining the system. Um, uh, and, and developing uh, the full system components, as well as training and educating our internal teams, as well as all of you and our dealers and operators as well to get ready for the smart corn system on the market. In 2022, that's starting with our technical agronomists. So our technical agronomists are managing system response trials, focusing on population response, fertility programs, split fertility programs, and fungicide programs different fungicide timing programs with over 200 cooperators in the Midwest this summer. Uh, in 2023, we, ex we plan to expand those um, trials out to groundbreaker trials with growers. So get this material in our growers' hands and see what you guys can do with it. We wanna continue to test and learn, get your feedback, and learn about what you think makes short stature corn awesome and what the biggest value drivers could be on your farm in your local area. We will have commercial hybrids available um, in the 2024 growing season when we'll have our, our official commercial launch of the smart corn system with the short stature hybrids. So this is an exciting time 
And again, I mentioned this is all with our breeding native trait, the most advanced technology that we have in our pipeline. And we're excited to continue to expand our testing, learn more about this product concept, and e evaluate and characterize the system components that can really unlock all the value that these hybrids can bring. So with that, I'd like to transition to the last part of our program. Um, in a moment, I'll introduce our, our colleague, but one last thing I'd like to leave you with about short stature corn. And what really resonates for me and when I talk with growers is around the reduction in risk and the increase in opportunities. So as you look at, at the slides we've shared today and start to maybe look at some trials this summer if they're near you um, or reach out to your bear representative or your agronomist to learn more about this technology, I encourage you to think about what would I do differently? With all of these opportunities and the flexibility that this product concept could provide me, what benefits could I get? Um, what else would I do differently um, to maximize the value on, on your farm? And share that information with us. We'd love to learn from you as we go on as well. So thank you very much. Please visit www.smartcornsystem.com to learn more. Talk with your bear representative as well. Um, and we'll be happy to share more information with you because this is going to be a really wild ride and it's gonna be amazing. So thank you very much. With that, I'm gonna to transition to my colleague, Ryan Tichich, who will facilitate the Q&A portion of the program with our growers, what we'll introduce in just a moment. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Denise. Great summary, great, great overview, great to hear about what the product can do. And now we're excited to talk a little bit with some, uh, some growers, and I'll ask our panelists to come up onto the stage here. And uh, just excited to hear a little bit uh, uh, from their perspective what the technology uh, can mean for them. So we'll let them take their seats here. I'm probably going to go over here because I'm getting a little bit of feedback, I think. So. So let's just, uh, let's just maybe start with just kind of introductions. And so, Brett, do you want to lead us off, talk a little bit about your operation? Uh, sure. Um, my name is Brett Heineman. I grow corn, soybeans in central Iowa. Uh, fifth generation family farm. I farm with my dad, my uncle, and my two cousins. Awesome. Brett? <clears throat> my name is Brant Voss. I'm from uh, Dexter, Iowa, just west of Des Moines, about 20 minutes. I'm a second generation farmer with uh, my dad and I have uh, five other siblings. A um, little bit about us, we have about a 1,500 acres of corn and 1,500 acres of soybeans. Um, I, uh, every year I entered into the um, yield contest, the NCGA yield, yield contest and um, with uh, <laughs> Sean and Andrew, we were able to pull through and get a W this year. So pretty excited about that so outstanding that, congratulations that was, that was on the that. opposite of short corn <laughs> well, i know <laughs> that stuff was huge yeah sean blumgren uh so fifth generation family farm uh we have a uh actually a decal basro dealership so we are in the shadow of the farm progress show site in central iowa so kind of positioned right in between these guys um have actually been with decal since 1989 so. Awesome. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us here uh, this, this afternoon. Let's talk a little bit about the protection part of what, what Denise was talking about there. So wind events, like you're all kind of in central Iowa, the derecho, the la la there have been a couple derechos that have gone through over the last few years. Just talk about, have you seen a lot of wind damage on your farm, lodging, things like that? And then maybe talk about what excites you about the standability that smart corn would bring. Well, uh we got hit pretty good. We got derecho, and then we got heavy hail that wiped out a lot of corn. And then we got this winter, we got kind of like a mini tornado thing too. So we are obviously, I don't think that would have protected us against anything, but uh, what excites me about it is just the standability. Uh, I mean, those acres that got hit by the derecho got knocked over and their yield potential went down greatly because of it. But I have no control over that. Um, I would have to say one of the things that really gets me excited is kind of to reiterate off of what he said is just the standability. Um, one thing with us is we're 20-inch corn and soybeans and have been for about 
uh, 22 years. And <clears throat> every year, I, I shouldn't say every year, but when we have a serious thunderstorm or wind event, um, we're putting on that corn reel. And I hate putting on that corn <laughs> reel. So um, <clears throat> it's just ugly and it, it's just, I, I hate it. But anyways, um, uh, just, Again, the standability and the opportunity to get out there, and, and we're experiencing more with foliar feeding. You know, that'll open up my window and application time. Um, another thing that I kind of get excited about, and we're, we got yet to experience, um, experiment with it, is you know maybe we can do our own fungicide application. I mean, everything that we do right now is by a helicopter, plane. You know, if we can get out there and, and do it ourselves, you know, that could be quite a bit of savings. Um, you know, a lot of guys tell me, "Well, just go buy a Haggy." I'm a John Deere guy, <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna keep with uh, our our deer sprayer. So um, that's that's what gets me excited about this short corn, and uh, you know, so we're excited to to try it this year. So yeah, so the duration. I remember August 10th, like it was yesterday, uh, and I think something that we don't what we haven't really talked about is. You know, we only get a few cracks at this, right? I mean, in our lives, we get to do 30, 40 crops, whatever it is. And I remember um, I used to make fun of Dad when he would stand by the window and watch storms roll through, you know, and I didn't get it. And I remember almost crying that day. All of the work that we had done, all of the testing, all of the on-farm trialing, all that stuff just gone in an instant, you know. And we have insurance to protect us from some things, right? I mean, I mean we got through it, we were fine. Um, I probably half this room was affected by that, I'm sure, but the psychology of losing all of that, all of that work that we had put together was, was just, I mean, to me, it was staggering. You know, we had, um, I forget, two or 300 trials in our, in, our, in our network of guys that were working on stuff. You know, we have, we have all this side-by-side -side data we're looking for. You know, talking about testing products and just in a in a flash it's gone right and so so certainly we've all probably experienced down corn but i think when i think of of at bats i only get a, i only get so many tries and and so it's just really discouraging besides the financial implication so when we started talking about this with our ta um i got excited about the fact that if i can increase the odds that i actually get to pull the data out um at the end of the year that's significant and i think as i walk around um uh the the trade show there are so many companies right now that have really outstanding ideas there are so many people that can help you make decisions um so beyond the access piece just knowing that our trial is actually going to make it to the end is critical um the 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 grain loss was tough but the but the taking a year off from data was really hard so yeah absolutely that's a good something point. to add yep. no i was just saying that's a good point sean because we run a three-year trial to see if it pays or not because you know mother nature can do crazy things so it needs to at least pay three years out of four before we'll implement it yeah so yeah great stuff hey so I want you to think a little bit about um you know what would you do differently right when you start thinking about opportunities maybe around density or, or around row spacing um i know there are different philosophies on that right in different places but just maybe give me a couple thoughts on you know how you may plant plant the crop a little differently. Brett, Brett and I get to argue on stage now, yeah, right? <laughs> say, we were just having a discussion about this. Uh, I've been pushing populations lower, and as I push the populations lower, my yield increases. So I've been kind of shooting for ten bushels per thousand, which you know realistically you're probably not going to get that, but you know that's I'm trying to get close to that as I possibly can. And with this short corn. I don't know what to think yet because I haven't seen it, you know, in large scale. Because from the better they make the genetics, it seems like it can do less with more. And I mean, we, I went and listened to Hula talk here not that long ago, and you know, the stuff he's doing with, he's getting 45 population plants to produce a second ear, which technically takes it up to like a 72,000 population, uh, you know, per acre. So I think these things can do amazing things. I just don't know which way to go with it yet. Should I be playing more with it or should I be planning less with it? Okay, now my turn. Okay, go for it. Go for <laughs> no, it. no, we were, it was fun. We were talking before this. So the, the, the density conversation I think is important because one of the things that Bayer does not see any job of is providing us data to indicate uh, ideal populations, right? And so we have access to that uh, when we're making recommendations, whether it's for our own farm or, or helping growers, we are almost always 
um, somewhere between 5 and 10 percent below what the data would says, suggest to be the optimal plant population for the yield curve. But I, I don't like angry phone calls from customers, right? And so, so balancing the act of standability with, with achieving our yield goals, I think, is really important. So regardless of the theory on any given farm, my thought would be if this corn proves to be a lot more stable, that gives us the ability to probably get closer to that ideal window. I know we leave, we leave a, lot of, um, a lot of bushel potential on the table because we need harvestable yeah. grain at the end of the year. So. <clears throat> you know, just because we won the contest and we've won it a couple other times, I don't claim to be an expert. You know, we're still learning and, and I'm always willing to learn. Um, we have, from our experience on the corn that we got now, you know, we're running around that 38, 39 plants and we feel like we're getting, we're capping out. I mean, we're, we're pushing fertility. What gets me excited about this short corn is I feel like, you know, we can up our pop you know, maybe in, the, in that 40 to 42 range, maybe even higher, and, and push fertility. And I, I really think that we're going to see a, a positive, um, uh, you know, return. feedback. Yeah, yeah, return from that. So, anyways, <laughs> you know, I guess that's what it, one thing that I really want to try. Um, you know, and why we've been reluctant on. Um, raising our pops too is just that standability factor you know and i feel like with the short corn um you know that's going to help us out so great good stuff let's talk a little bit more about access right and so we think about um we we're talking about fertility right and so we think it opens the door maybe for different strategies as far as fertility goes I mean, we've been talking a lot about foliar feed and maybe side dressing and open up in a wider a wider window for that um Talk about what that might mean for, for your operation, how you're thinking about that with, with smart corn. Well, to me, that's the most exciting part is uh, being able to like logistically go out there and put like nitrogen later. I think that's a, a key thing. Um, I mean, right now we don't do it because we want to get out there, we side dress with, with a, a bar. Well, we can only go out there at a certain time. And once that window has gone, we can't get out there anymore and to logistically do it with a Hagee to us, we can't. If we're gonna go spray fungicide when you should probably be putting out nitrogen, it just doesn't work. But also like shrink, shrinking it down and then doing like a foliar fungicide, I think your coverage will be a lot better. And even let's just say you go to foliar, foliar feeding, there, I think there's some potential there that we just don't know what it is yet. Yeah, You know, kind of like what I said at the beginning is you know, if we're able to do our own fungicide pass, you know, that's going to save us $14, $15 an acre right there. I mean, if we just did it ourselves. I mean, there's obviously going to be some more challenges. You know, you might be running over some crop, um, and it's just going to take more time versus your aerial application. But um, those are the opportunities that we see. And also with us just um, experiencing, um, experimenting with more foliar feeding, um, we're seeing a positive return on foliar feeding, you know, putting out some of your micronutrients um, when they're needed throughout the season. And this is just really going to open up our window because there's a last year I was only able to get, you know, probably a quarter of our acres done. Um, corn just got too tall. So I really think that this is going to open up my window and um, give us a positive return on that as well. So, yeah, I. I just, this is so fun. I come here to get motivated, you know, and it's, I mean, it's just fun because we, we walk around and we think about all these things and then you have to implement them. The barrier to entry, I think, is really hard. So, so you know, Brant mentioned his love for John Deere and, and maintaining that, but, you know, we have, we have a ton of guys that will make recommendations to around in-season management. And, you know, it is, it is not easy to run a haggy through tasseled corn. I mean, you have to be a skilled operator um, and, and you, you also have to be willing to commit to that time, right? And so I, I think the access is huge. I think when we think of access, you know, my mind goes to just driving in and out of the field. You know, we have better access to the field. I think it opens up. Right now, we think of everything in a pre-pass, a post-pass, and usually one time through the field. And most guys hate that last trip through the field because it's, it's a hard time to get through it. When I think of access, my mind goes to 
downstairs, everything down there now becomes available to you. You know, you have the ability to have a conversation here, implement something, and then reasonably go reasonably go test it. Um, so access to me, it, 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 it kind of unlocks the door to all the things that we might want to try that we've currently been hesitant to because of access to those fields. Yep, good stuff. Um, maybe, maybe kind of last question I have, and I, we've been kind of hitting on it as we, as we go, but just thinking about fungicides, thinking about disease management. Do you, do you imagine doing anything different disease management wise with that access component being available? Uh, any, any other thoughts along those lines? Well, I think immediately, yes. I, you know, immediately, um, I, I don't know the statistics on how many people have a high clearance sprayer, but immediately you change fungicide applications. When we were discussing this um, before coming up here, and you know everybody's talking about chemical availability, right? It's hard to get fungicide. It's going to be even harder to find somebody to apply it. Um, you go to you go to places where tar spots are uh, 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 growing. Um, you know those guys are booking two applications. You're not going to get a helicopter or an airplane. You know you come come to Central Iowa, it'll be hard to get an applicator, and so. Um, I, when I think about our book of business where we make recommendations, it's probably it's probably 30 percent of our, our customer base that has a high clearance sprayer is, is probably probably our book of business. So you immediately just just opened up the entire market there to to have access to to fungicides. And, you know, if this tar spot thing doesn't change, you're talking you're talking at, at least today. The advice is, you know, maybe multiple fungicide passes so and and immediate reaction you know you you have to identify that disease and spray instantly so having access is going to be really really critical i think it'll change our business significantly i i agree i i, I can't say anything else on that yeah so. um, same way good deal a any other we're kind of approaching the end of our time here any other final thoughts that you'd like to to leave folks with on on smart corn any other final words <laughs> uh, my only question is any type of hilly ground if you hit a dip i mean are you gonna be able to grab the ear or are you gonna are corn heads gonna have to change a little bit i i mean i don't know but that's my biggest concern about it everything else i'm pretty excited about you know i um pretty much same thing with me but i just you know we don't know until we try so um I think we're going to find a lot of things out. I know we're going to get a couple, a couple things to try this year, and um, you know, and then once when we find out what we can and can't do, it'll, that'll decide whether we put that on a large scale or not. So, yeah, I'll be the woo woo guy. I, I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm really, really excited. Yeah. I, I think I was the only guy at my table that did it, but uh, no, I mean, I'm, I, I am really, really pumped about it. I think unlocking our ability to manage our, our farms. You know, I. I again like I say you walk around down here and you come away with all these ideas and you go man I could I could really implement things I think it's super encouraging so um, yeah I, it's gonna be exciting and one, one thing yeah. I will add that I just thought of you know there's been a lot of guys in our area that's been hesitant to go to narrow row spacings just because of the standability yeah um, I think that this is gonna you know unlock those doors for some of those guys that just want to finally make that step and go a little yeah. bit you know to a narrow row um, you know, with the short corn. So we'll see. Awesome. Hey, really appreciate your time and your thoughts and comments. This was great insight, great stuff. We have, uh, as Denise mentioned, we're gonna have a lot of testing here this next year. A lot of it will be on farm, right? On farms throughout the Midwest. And we're gonna keep learning more about the product and uh, set it up for success as we, as we launch in 2024. So in the meantime, come see us at the Bear booth. We'd be happy to chat with you, talk with you more about the Smart Corn System. Uh, I think up on the screen there, yep, we've got it, smartcornsystem.com. That's a great resource for you. And of course, I always feel free to reach out to your sales rep or your local agronomist uh, to get more information. But thank you everybody for your time and uh, have a great day. Thank you.